In this video, we are going to continue our discussion over vectors, um, talking about the next natural question to ask about them. Um, what happens when I do things with them? What happens when I add vectors or uh, subtract vectors and multiply vectors? We're going to do a multiplying later. Um, adding and subtracting. So the vector sum, um, and I'm just going to give you the theorem here. Um, it is exactly what you think you should do. If I have a vector u and a vector v, and I want to add them to get u plus v, I just add the components. u1 and v1 are the x's, and u2 and v2 are the y's, the directions. It makes sense, too. If u describes a direction um, that it's getting pushed in an x direction, and v describes an x direction, then it would just be together, right? If a force is pushing it x direction this much, and another force pushes it more in the x direction, then it would just go together, the two together. It makes sense. Um, if you think about if um, a car pushes another car going, you know, like how that speed goes together, those forces theoretically should add together. That one's kind of a weird one now that I started saying it. But forces, when you, when you put two forces together, you get the two forces added. So we can think about vectors that way. There's also another way um, I'm going to show you on a picture down there where it says sum of vectors when we get down there. Okay, the scalar multiple um, of C and U is the vector. So if I'm multiplying a vector just by a scalar, remember a scalar is just a number. We have two different measures. A scalar is just a number. I'm going to use a hashtag for a number. And then a vector is a direction and magnitude or length. I'm just going to do mag here. Okay, it's both. So in this case, number two just says a number times a vector, and we do exactly what we would think there too. It distributes to both. And we'll see the geometric um, <clears throat> view down here at the bottom. The negative of V is just like multiplying by a negative one. So when I multiply by a negative, it just goes to both components negative. The difference of U and V, if I'm going to subtract them like down here, I could just think about it this way distribute the negative, and then it becomes this. So when we're adding and subtracting and even multiplying by a number, it's exactly what you think it would be. Um, adding, when you add two vectors, add the x's, add the y's. When you subtract them, subtract the x's, subtract the y's. If you multiply by a number, distribute it through. All right, take a look down here at the bottom. We're going to start here with this just vector v. If I take v and I multiply, let's start here, and multiply by 2, notice that the thing that changes, the length did not change, or sorry, the direction did not change. They're pointing in the same direction. The two changed the length, though. It doubled the length. So times two doubles it, times half, cuts it in half, but notice the direction did not change. So this whole multiplying by a scalar does not change the direction, it just changes the length. A negative takes the vector and it does affect the direction, but it just points it in the negative uh, the opposite. That makes sense, right? Negative typically means opposite. So a V going in one direction, negative V goes in the complete opposite. And then the last one, negative three halves, negative points it in a different direction. And then notice if this is two over two, this is three over two, right? It's three halves of the length. So a multiplier, a scalar, in front of a vector changes the length of the vector or changes it in opposite direction. But multiplying it by a number will not change the direction of the vector outside of just changing opposite directions. All right, sum of vectors. Um, this one's nice and easy to uh, think about displacement. Like a, a vector, think about moving on a road. Um, if we take the first picture, we're doing u plus v. Notice they took this v vector here and put the tip there and the arrow there. So that's that next picture. They just move the arrow, the v up. So this is our first vector here, right? And then we have our second vector here. And if I think about this like going to cities, right? This would be like, I don't know, Tulsa to um, Joplin to St. Louis, right? Then we could think about it that the resultant vector U plus V is actually just the like, um, I, what do you call that? Bird's eye view or bird's track, like straight to it. It's a straight path. So it, it is your just like resultant vector, meaning after I get pushed, like, let's think about it this way. If, if this was some kind of force, it would push me here, 
and then it would push me there. The resultant vector just skips all that and just says, hey, this is where you end up, right? So we could think about it the other way too. If you put u down here on v, we end up in that exact, exact same spot. Um, the u plus v is called a resultant vector. This is gonna be very important. Um, at the end of this section, we're gonna talk about forces and we're gonna talk about the resultant vector being the resultant force. Okay, here's a couple other ways to think about this vector addition. I'm not going to talk to that again. You can kind of see how that's going. This is why everything works out. Scalar multiplication relates back to this thing. Uh, sorry about that. This thing here. Um, if you want to see how those mechanics work. And then the last thing I need you to pay attention to is this U minus V. Um, so U plus V results in something like this, right? It's the connection between U minus V. I'm going to draw it here to just help U, and then I got V here. U minus V is the arrow in between them like that. And we end up at U. So you go to V first and go across. My arrow doesn't look good here, but we're going to use this later. There's a, there's a problem. I think it's a quiz, uh, something like that. There's a problem later, several problems. I'm going to talk talking um, kind of vague because I'm going to change things as I go along. This video will be used for a, a small handful of years, um, if years. Anyways, U, V, if I want to subtract them, I put tail to tail, and then I connect them, and that's U minus V. If I want the other way, V minus U, it's just flipped the arrow, flips this way, where my pen go, flips that way instead. Okay, we are going to use this. Um, geometrically to help us out to solve some problems. All right, let's work an example of uh, three examples of this just to show how these things work. Um, so problem A, they gave us V and W, and A says one-half V. So I'm just going to work it out the way it looks. One-half times, and then I'm going to put V here. Oops, make sure you're using angle brackets. And then I just distribute. I got negative three halves, comma, five halves. I think that's a great answer. You do not need to go to a decimal. That, that would be silly. Um, you could if you wanted to. I wouldn't go to a mixed number because we just don't really use those in algebra. Okay, so there's that first one. That's how we multiply by a scalar. It's nice and pretty. We want those on assessments. B. Okay, so it's a W minus V. So let's write in W27. Oops, make sure you're using angle brackets. V is negative 3, 5. All right. And I'm going to distribute that negative because my brain works a little better when I do that. So I'm going to make that a plus, put a 3 minus 5. So I just distribute it. I'm going to make this a little smaller because I got one more problem to do. I can add those together. Um, I got 5, 2. All right, so that is the resultant vector. If I were to draw W and V, right? Let's just do a random one here. W and V. Then this vector that I just drew is actually, or wrote this vector here, is the vector from here to here. All right, let's do C. We got V plus 2w. So v is negative 3, 5 plus 2 times w. All right, we distribute that out. All right, distribute goes through. I got 4, 14. All right, let me make this a little smaller so I can fit. So the answer here, if I add my components, I got 1, 19. It's not too bad. Um, it's exactly what you, you would want to do when you're adding vectors and subtracting. Multiplication is not going to be as nice um, once we get there. So your properties of vector operations, I'm going to write them out. Um, these are given with almost anything you do in grade school. You should have seen these words before. Commutative property means I can add vectors in any order. Associative property means if I'm adding three vectors together, I can add any two I want first. That's all associative. I always think about associating at parties. 
if I associate, it doesn't matter if I talk to who I talk to in what order. By the end of the night, I talk to everybody. Something like that. It's kind of silly, but it worked for me. Additive identity property just means there's something I can add, a vector I can add to get the same vector. Well, that's the zero vector. Additive uh, inverse property means I have something I can add to it to get back to the additive identity, which is zero. Well, we have negative vectors. A vector plus a negative vector is zero. Um, the scalars can be, you can multiply two scalars together, then multiply it or multiply one through it, then the other doesn't matter. Scalars distribute through uh, vectors. A vector distributes through scalars. And then we have some things down there. So these are things that are going to come about naturally. All these work. You're used to this type of math working almost in anything you've done. The reason they go over this is at some point in math, these don't work anymore. Um, <clears throat> if you studied any kind of uh, matrices, matrices uh, in addition work, but multiplication, you can't multiply in any order you want. So even though it feels like you've been seeing these same things and it always works, and why do we talk about it if it always works? Because eventually it won't. We just like to start math in a very nice, simple manner. All right. One last thing, um, and I'm going to prove this to you um, and do a, do a proof um, just to see, um, give you a, a taste of what this type of math feels like when we're proving things. Okay, let V be a, a vector and C be a scalar. Then we have that if I multiply the vector by the scalar and then take the magnitude, it's the same thing as taking the magnitude and times it by the scalar. The absolute value of the scalar has to be positive. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one side of the equation and I'm going to follow the equation until I get to the other side. So if I run definition here, actually, let's go ahead and um, let's do this a, a a little formal. So let V equal V1, oops, V1, V2, and C be a real number. In math proofs, we always have to start with an English word, then, or whatever language, CV is equal to the magnitude of C1, CV2. I just distributed it. All right, let's do the magnitude now. So the magnitude says take the square root of CV1 squared plus CV2 squared. Sorry, that weird parentheses there. That is the definition of magnitude. All right. This is c squared v1 squared plus c, c squared v2 squared. All right? And notice that we can actually factor out that c2. Look at that. So we're just following the algebra. I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to move over here. And I don't want to go into another page because I'm ending the video after this problem. Okay, so this gets me the square root of c squared times the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. All right, the square root of c, c squared, um, I want you to be careful. The answer is not just c. It has to be the absolute value of c. The reason being is, amount, uh, think about on this for a moment. If I put a c in there, I have to square it. So if c is negative... Let's, let's keep it easy. Let's make c, c equals negative 2. So the square root of negative 2 squared is the square root of, that's a 4, which is a 2. That's not what c is. c is negative 2. But the square will always get rid of the sign if it's a negative. All right, so that last step here, okay, I know that that is now the absolute value of c. This thing here is just the magnitude of v. And we have proved that theorem there. All right, so we usually put, uh, I put two lines there to say I'm in with my proof. You could put uh, in, finish, whatever. Uh, people put boxes if you look in your book anytime they prove something. Um, so we have proved that. If you're interested in that, please reach out to me. This is what uh, a lot of upper math starts looking like. Uh, it does change away from calculus pretty strong. But if you're interested, I'm always into converting people to math. Um, all right.